Previously, the mysterious figure in the cloak is revealed to be Dasar. Kraken questions how Dasar knew he was there. Dasar explains that he marked Kraken with his mana earlier. Kraken thinks the whole situation must be Dasar's doing. Kraken laughs, acknowledging Dasar's clever move for someone so young, but warns him that he will regret interfering. Kraken then attempts to attack Dasar using earth magic, but Dasar effortlessly reverses the spell. Kraken is surprised, and Dasar states it's time for Kraken to return what he stole. Kraken tries another spell, only for Dasar to reverse it as well. Bewildered, Kraken realizes Dasar is somehow reversing his spells. He deems it impossible and attempts a more powerful spell, but Dasar effortlessly inverts it too. Dasar explains that attacking him with spells is futile and moves closer to Kraken. Thing continues as, Kraken warns Dasar not to come closer or he'll destroy Regernal's tears. Dasar responds, telling Kraken to go ahead if that's what he wants. Dasar then strikes Kraken with a gravity spell, immobilizing him. Kraken is amazed at how quickly Dasar casts such a high-level spell. Dasar seizes Regernal's tears, using it to draw mana. Kraken is puzzled about how Dasar extracts mana from an unprocessed gem. Dasar dismisses Kraken's curiosity and intensifies the power of his gravity spell to crush him. In a final attempt, Kraken taps into the power of his mask, transforming into a demonic entity. He launches an attack at Dasar, who manages to block it but sustains some injury. Kraken continues to land blows on Dasar, who retaliates with a fire attack. However, the fire doesn't affect Kraken. Undeterred, Kraken attacks Dasar barehanded. Dasar skillfully dodges all the attacks and counters with another fire spell. Unfortunately, this spell also proves ineffective against Kraken. Kraken retaliates with a magic attack, confidently stating that Dasar's level of attack won't harm him. Dasar is astonished to learn that Kraken can also use magic in his transformed state. Kraken launches another spell at Dasar, who attempts to reverse it. However, Kraken declares he won't give Dasar enough time to reverse it and attacks him with a combination of fists and magic, not allowing Dasar a moment to breathe. Kraken even hurls Dasar into the air, creating spikes on the ground. Dasar, though, manages to reverse the spikes before landing, showcasing his persistence. Kraken then unleashes a potent spell, confident it will be the end for Dasar. Despite Dasar's attempts to reverse the spell, it takes shape immediately after being reversed. Dasar realizes his inversion won't work on this spell. Kraken forms a weapon with the spell and attacks Dasar. Dasar defends himself with multiple magical shields. Kraken systematically breaks through each shield, creating a massive cloud of smoke on the battlefield. Thinking he has defeated Dasar, Kraken laughs, claiming Dasar's consequence for opposing the outers. However, he soon realizes Dasar is unharmed and his weapon has broken instead. Dasar explains that the spell was rare, requiring some time to analyze. He then successfully reverses Kraken's armor. Astonished, Kraken attempts to attack Dasar, who draws mana from the gem and casts a fireball spell. The spell connects, effectively taking out Kraken. Kraken questions Dasar about his true identity, but Dasar admits he doesn't have a clear answer to that. However, he believes he knows his role. Romantica and Prem arrive at the scene. Pram embraces Dasar, and a shadow that had been watching Dasar's fight departs. The scene shifts to the Magical Tower headquarter, where Professor Prelude asks Dasar if he's certain about his chosen reward for safeguarding Regernal's tears. Dasar affirms his desire for a chess match against the Tower Master. Prelude finds Dasar's request unusual, and remarks that the Tower Master, too, is eccentric for accepting such a challenge. She escorts Dasar to meet the Tower Master, emphasizing that her involvement ends there and advising him to behave. Upon meeting the Tower Master, Zod, Dasar expresses gratitude and introduces himself. Dasar declares Zod the strongest mage both presently and in the future, considering him an irreplaceable friend. Zod invites Dasar to take a seat, acknowledging the limited time he has due to a meeting in 27 minutes. Dasar thanks Zod for making time and expresses his eagerness for their chess game. Zod inquires if Dasar has any preferred rules for the game, and Dasar requests the herbal method. Zod finds this an uncommon choice, as few in the vicinity are familiar with those rules. Nevertheless, Zod arranges the board according to the herbal method. Dasar reveals he learned this method from a good friend, indicating his future self, who compelled him to learn it. Zod sympathizes, acknowledging it must have been challenging. Dasar reflects that it's now a fond memory, as they commence their chess game. As the chess game progresses, Zod acknowledges Dasar's skill, and Dasar thanks him for the compliment. However, Zod notes that Dasar still has much to learn after making a move. Zod mentions that he might make it to the meeting at this rate. Dasar agrees, suggesting they make a wager. He proposes that the loser grants a wish for the winner. Zod dismisses the idea, stating that Dasar won't be able to fulfill his wish.
This Tsar notices unprocessed gems on Zod's desk and wonders if he can borrow them. Zod consents, and Dissar demonstrates his ability to use mana from unprocessed gems. Intrigued, Zod questions how Dissar accomplishes this. Dissar declares that revealing the answer will be his wager. Zod agrees, stating Dissar will explain if he wins. Zod asks Dissar about his wish, but Dissar defers the answer until he wins. They resume their game, with Dissar determined to give it his all. The scene shifts to Aziz at a party for Blue Moon members in Fergman's villa. Fergman requests Aziz help in lifting the spirits of the crowd, citing unpleasant rumors due to their loss in the ranking tournament. Aziz, uninterested, acknowledges the loss and rejects the idea of hiding or lying about it. Fergman blames Aziz for the defeat, stating it wouldn't have happened if she had defeated Dasar's team. Frustrated, Fergman suggests she leave the Blue Moon party if she has complaints. Aziz contemplates her party and Dasar's team, deciding it's not a bad idea. She quits the Blue Moon party and departs. The scene then transitions to Pram holding a teddy bear, leading Romantica to comment that it reminds her of someone and appears somewhat irritating. Pram finds the teddy bear cute, and Dasar praises both Pram and Romantica for their efforts against the outers. He credits them for recovering Regernal's tears. However, Romantica disagrees, stating they had no chance against Kraken and need to become stronger. Dasar confirms that's his point. Pram questions why Dasar wants them to strive for strength and Ditsar reveals that a shadow world will emerge in 13 days. They'll be sent to conquer it, an experience vastly different from their academy simulations. Ditsar emphasizes the gravity of the task. Failure could bring the world closer to doom, and they could lose their lives. He's determined to prevent this and vows not to let anyone die. Romantica, recalling Ditsar's accurate predictions about the previous clock tower and the outers, expresses confidence that Ditsar's warning about the shadow world will also come true. Intrigued and puzzled by Dessar's mysterious strength and insights, Romantica decides to uncover his secret herself. She insists Dessar not reveal it yet, even as Dessar attempts to explain. Romantica covers her ears, refusing to hear the explanation. Pram, however, expresses his belief in Dessar, and Dessar appreciates his trust. Dessar stresses the need for all of them to become stronger, acknowledging that the journey won't be easy, but urging them to persevere. Following this, Dessar takes on the role of training Romantica while Pram seeks guidance from a teacher to improve his skills. Dissar also extends his training to Aziz, and over time, they all commit to rigorous training sessions to enhance their magical abilities and physical strength. As their training progresses, each member manages to acquire new skills and insights. The passage of 13 days marks the culmination of their preparation. Suddenly, an emergency announcement echoes throughout the academy, informing all students about the emergence of a shadow world. Everyone is instructed to gather at the auditorium. Romantica, clad in her combat uniform, receives a compliment from Dissar, who also praises Pram's appearance. The trio readies themselves for teleportation to the Shadow World, and Aziz joins them, having officially become part of their party. Romantica approves of Aziz's inclusion, recognizing the value of having someone with her abilities on their team. Dissar reflects on the significance of this moment, feeling a sense of purpose in being brought back to this place. He is determined to save the world alongside his friends. With their preparations complete, they enter the shadow world, ready to face whatever challenges await them. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe.